Hey everyone welcome back to another episode of r slash pro revenge. In today's episode. You fire me for talking about unionizing, I'll spill all your dirty secrets. Pandemic petty. Teacher wouldn't let me use the restroom, I got her suspended. Before we get into today's episode, remember to subscribe so you never miss a video. So let's get started. You fire me for talking about unionizing, I'll spill all your dirty secrets. This is a bit of a long one, please bear with me to the end. I used to work for a plasma collection center back from 2008 to 2010. Even though I was a certified phlebotomist I was placed up in reception and I slowly worked my way up to senior receptionist and trainer. I was also training for quality control and was known for keeping detailed notes of issues that were in need of fixing training which I would forward on to management. Some of the things I'd keep track of were violations of FDA and GHA, German Health Authority since we were run by a German, Swiss company, as well as OSHA issues. Because I wasn't seeing anything being done, I eventually stopped reporting the issues to avoid being labeled a troublemaker and just kept time, date info and if I could I got pictures with date stamps just to cover my own ass in case something bad went down. Fast forward to June of 2010 and I was talking with one of my co-workers about the proposed cuts to benefits and the high turnover rate at our center. They were complaining to me about being afraid to call in sick because others had been fired for it, and I mentioned that they were putting donors in danger by us being sick since we weren't allowed to wear face masks unless we were in the back in the donor area and even then it was the clear face shields to prevent getting hit if someone, leaked, on us. Without thinking about it, I talked about how unions protected against this sort of thing in other medical fields, and how that might be something we should consider to help protect us. The coworker got weirdly quiet, but I figured it was because I was talking about a subject most people don't like talking about. Nothing really happened until about August when another coworker grabbed my ponytail while I was working with a donor and yanked down on it, jerking my head back. I'd informed everyone I worked with to never touch my hair because it was a trauma trigger for me from being abused, and so this coworker knew I would wind up in panic mode from this. She'd seen it happen before when a donor touched my hair, so this was deliberate. I remember telling her to not do that again, or I would make her get away. She of course walked up and yanked my hair even harder, and I hit her. The supervisors went into damage control mode as I fled the area, still in a panic response, and one of them cornered me and demanded I write down what happened because I had, assaulted, someone on the property. I wrote my side as well as told them to check security footage since the camera was aimed right at the booth I was working at and had clear view of the events. Turned out everyone else told an entirely different, and creepily similar, story than what I told, and the footage couldn't be found even though less than half an hour had passed. I was fired for assault less than an hour later and escorted off the premises after being given five minutes to clear out my locker and get my belongings. So on to the revenge, which was two-pronged. My partner was there on that day and saw what happened, and tried to offer to write up what he saw, but was denied. So the next time he went in, he wound up being screened by the co-worker who yanked my hair, who didn't even get a write up for assaulting me, and asked her loudly enough that the whole reception area could hear, so how's those 50 shekels of silver, Judas? Was it worth it? Which left her in tears and another person had to finish screening him. He wound up being banned for 6 months for his attitude, but he claims it was more than worth it. While this was going on, I had been reaching out to the various organizations and departments that oversaw plasma donation and collection, the FDA, OSHA, CDC, GHA, and the like. I informed them of the fact that we always cleaned prior to an inspection but we didn't keep things that clean day to day, and suggested a surprise inspection should be in order. I also handed over copies of everything I'd collected and tried to report, but always got shut down. I learned a few months later that all of the management and several of the other techs and supervisors were all, suddenly, reassigned in the FDA, GHA, and OSHA had all slammed fines on the center for violations dating back almost the whole time I worked there. Pandemic Petty So I wasn't the victim of this Karen, but I was the enactor of the petty revenge. In the midst of this pandemic, a lot of businesses are limiting the number of people that can be in the store at one time. I was going to the grocery store across the street when I see the massive line. Now there were only like 50 people in line, but by following the 6 feet 2 meters rule, this line was physically pretty long. 
I needed some stuff and the weather was nice so I just decided to wait and take this opportunity to relax. Now this Karen in front of me is on the phone with someone complaining about how long the line is and how big of a hurry she's in. This woman has the full mask, gloves, goggles, hairnet, don't know what that is for, and a custom shirt that says, stop stay six feet away from me. Anytime someone passing along the sidewalk came close she dodged them to stay away. About 10 minutes pass and now there's only 30 people in line in front of us when this woman, early mid-twenties, who is four places ahead of Karen sneezes into her sleeve. Now I want to take this opportunity to say that sneezing is not a symptom of COVID-19 and not indicative of one's status. It's April and springtime and as someone who has suffered my whole life with allergies, I can tell the difference between a, I am sick, sneeze and a, pollen tickled my nose, sneeze. This was an allergy sneeze. But Karen felt like she had just discovered a bioterrorism plot. She begins yelling at the poor girl. Keep in mind this girl and Karen are still like 30 feet 9 meters away so Karen is literally yelling. Karen is mainly giving a box soap lecture on how this girl is endangering the community and Karen's kids for not following self-quarantine orders when she obviously has the virus. She of course calls the employee monitoring the door over who sends out the manager, we all know Karen would have called for the manager eventually am I right? The manager tries to figure out the situation while Karen threatens to call the cops to arrest the girl. Eventually the girl just gives up and leaves. She'll just come back or go to a different store. This satiates Karen and I am more than convinced she was just looking for excuses to kick people out of line and speed up her entry. As someone who works in diseases, I have seen how flat out stupid people have been in regards to this disease have been and decide that Karen's actions of nearly starting a panic just shouldn't go unpunished. The temperature was 88 F, 32 C ish, which ISNT really hot, but since it was the first day to break past 65 F, I could tell it definitely felt warmer. People were definitely sweating, and considering how long people were waiting outside in the sun, people were getting a good dosage of heat. I waited until Karen was the next person in the store when I noticed she was definitely fanning herself. Right before the door clerk said it was okay, I asked her, ma'am, are you feeling okay? You look a little warm, kind of feverish. She snapped back, I'm fine it's the sun mind your business. The door guard caught on to what I was hinting at and agreed. Miss we'll have to take you temperature. And he radioed the monitors the store has a thermal gun to check the temperature of anyone suspicious. I've never seen them use it but I knew they had it. She cried, why? It's just because I've been in the sun, you didn't check anyone else's temperature. He said, it's just a policy to check anyone who looks feverish. The guy comes and takes her temperature. 100.7 F, 38 C, just over the 100.4 F limit the store set. The temperature guy informs her that she will not be allowed to enter the store for public safety. She begins to throw a conniption fit saying, it's the sun, I am not sick, test him. They do. I get a 99.9 F. The guy informs me that I can now enter the store. I thank him and go in to grab my milk while I can hear Karen still yelling. I hope she was able to get her essential Pinot Grigio somewhere. Just not here. Side note. Most grocery stores have a early window to allow elderly shoppers 60 plus to come with lower risk of infection. Almost suggested that if she wanted to avoid contamination she should do that, she was no older than 45 but knew that would piss her off. Teacher wouldn't let me use the restroom, I got her suspended. The title explains it. To preface I have Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. This qualifies me as disabled and so starting when I first got sick in HS I was required accommodations by state law. Being disabled was hard and pretty complicated since after being diagnosed with IBD I started getting various other health issues ranging from kidney issues to neurological issues to fibromyalgia. My school was very reasonable, and even after missing three months when I was first diagnosed I still got all of my credits. The following year I was doing alright. Then second semester one of my teachers left and the new one was a complete monster. She refused to teach with the textbook and used Wikipedia instead. Wouldn't give us any tests or practice for the AP exam we were due to take, I was very frustrated and felt unprepared. She absolutely loathed me since I had a little pink pass that allowed me to take my meds in class, go to the nurse as needed, and have unlimited restroom breaks. She thought I was a disruption. 
I would do my best to wait until she was done talking unless I was in too much pain, but she would always roll her eyes and groan at me. One day I had just gotten in from a doctor's appointment and rushed into her class. I asked to go to the restroom and said I'd be right back. She said no. Well asking is just a formality. All of the teachers get emails about the disabled students and know about their accommodations. So I told her, I need to go to the restroom, I'm going. As I left she groaned something about me always wasting class time and faking it. I picked up my stuff and took it with me. I went to the restroom. Then I went downstairs to my dean's office. I signed in and when he came out to get me I told him about her attitude and how she refused to let me use my accommodation so I came here. I simply told him that they should let her know that she's required to let me leave the class for a reason and I have medical paperwork to back that up. He apologized profusely and called the teacher. He told her that he was sending a substitute to her room and he wanted to speak with her. Then he called for a substitute teacher on his walkie-talkie. She arrived at his office looking very displeased to say the least. He sent me out of the room and I waited in the lobby for I think 20 minutes. Once she left he had her stop at the desk to fill out some paperwork. He brought me back into the office to fill out paperwork too about what had happened. A few other students who heard what had happened came in as witnesses and after that she was gone for three weeks. To my knowledge she was suspended BC she opened them up to a potential lawsuit. Blatantly denying a disabled student their accommodations is against the law here, and the school didn't tolerate it one bit. I will admit I do feel a little bad, but I don't take any shit when it comes to my body and my diseases. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.